Okay. Um, so almost exactly two years ago, my father died. He was young, um, his early 60s, and I was very close to him, and he died very unexpectedly. Um, and it was totally horrendous. And I got a call here in New York, and I got on a plane, and I went home, and I called a bunch of people and said I quit. And then I was just home for months to help and to, I don't even know, I was just at home and I didn't have a job or anything. And about after about two months of that, I started going crazy. So I decided that I was gonna rent a car. Well, my mom helped me rent a car and I was gonna drive all the way across Texas to West Texas to the desert to Big Bend National Park and I was gonna go hiking alone. Um, I had never been hiking before. Um, but I, I read uh, that book Wild by Cheryl Strong. <laughs> walked up to the office and was like, I would like my backpacking permit. And they're like, have you ever done this before? And I was like, yes. Um, and it was August, it was really hot. Anyway, so I went up there onto the mountain and I got, you know, I got lost. And like, there were two separate times where I was like, I, I think I'm going to die right now. <laughs> and it was just this like horrible ordeal. And at the end of the day, I'd end up walking like 23 miles that day or something, like having to come back down off the mountain. Um, and by the time I got back to the base camp, I was just like so disoriented and like upset. I just like found the first person there who was this like 19 year old college sophomore and I had sex with him in the back of his pickup truck. <laughs> so then I was like, I need to leave the national park. <laughs> Marfa, um, and it's known for its like desert installation art. So I rolled up to this installation, you know I hadn't showered in like days, um, so I rolled up to this installation which is inside an ice factory, so like back in you know the 19th century the trains would come, they'd have these blocks of ice and they'd put them into this brick building to keep it I ice as long as possible. Um, so you went in and I was by myself and it, there was nothing in there, it was really dark, but you were supposed to sit and like look at the big long wall and just look at it and it had these lights and I couldn't tell what was happening like the lights were moving and it took a while for your eyes to adjust but then I realized that like behind me on the big wall behind me there was just a, a hole in the wall and the light streamed in and because of the physics of the camera obscura it as my eyes adjusted to what I was looking at it was a perfect picture of what was going on outside which is West Texas you know it's beautiful these huge clouds and like land and I mean there's not even jet trails across the sky it's empty so I sat there and I just like looked at it for hours and I like cried I was just there by myself until this man walked in and he sat down next to me and we started talking and I he was like my name's Ben I just moved here today um, I'm from Connecticut I taught third grade but I quit abruptly and I just come out here to live and you should call me Buzz. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna die now. <laughs> um, so I asked him, I was like, why Buzz? He was like, well, actually, you know, I named myself Buzz a long time ago, but I think I just got the courage to start going by it today. So today I'm Buzz. And I was like, wow, you know, why? Um, and he, <laughs> he just looked at me dead in the eye and he said, I don't know, Molly, some days are totally new worlds for no reason at all, even if everything looks the same. Yeah. And I was like, should we go to your place or... <laughs>
like, I don't know, I go back to this TP and like one thing leads to another and then I'm just like, you know, like on my back looking out the top of like the whole of the TP into like the West Texas night. And I had to think really hard about why I did that. <laughs> Cheryl Strait, she does all these things, and she's rich. <laughs> Growing up, I would look at my dad, and I think, you know, God, you haven't lived, you're from this small town, and how do you let all the years fly by you, and you do the same thing every day, and you talk to the same people, like, how is that living? Um, and, um, but then after, when I went to his funeral, there was 600 people there. Like, the whole town came out. And, you know, the mayor, the, our mailman, you know, like, everyone in this town. And I think that was, like, for the first time that I felt the bigness of his life and really could see the sliding scale of what it can mean to have something like that in your life, to feel bigness, I guess. Um, so back to the TP. Um, the next morning, oh, I woke up the next morning and Buzz gave me $23. And um, I did a lot of internal work, and now I'm not offended by that anymore. I left, and I left, and we never saw each other again. back really. Um, there's this German word, and I had it on a napkin, but I lost it on the way here, so I don't know the word. <laughs> but it means a longing for a home that doesn't exist anymore. And that's me. And that's my mom who just moved out of my family home a few months ago. And it's Buzz too. I mean, it's all of us under the desert sky, with only the days ahead of us and the wisps of the wind behind. Thank you. <laughs>